And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the craziest, drunkest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us straight from Cross Eye Comics, creators of the Whack Jobs. And the man who has become the monastery's unofficial ambassador to the great state of tech of the great state of Texas, the one and only Mike. How are you doing tonight, man? <laughs> doing great. Thanks for having me, man. No, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on, and thanks and thanks for thanks for putting up with my towering ass when I was at Cow Town. No, nah, we good. We mm -hmm. good. Like you said, everything's bigger in Texas. You're mm -hmm. more than welcome here, brother. Yeah. Um. Don't worry, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to be back sometime in 2021, so I'll have a so I'll have an ex, I'll have a perfect ex, excuse to try to try out some of the stuff you mentioned. Yeah, Waterburger, that's right. Mm -hmm. well, that's what that's what everybody keeps telling me. Everybody keeps that's saying right. I need to I need to go there. Some 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 say it's a I've seen some people say that it's the place you it's the place you go when Everybody's um, trying to get trying to get the hangover out of their system, and it's three in the morning. Um, the scene, the lines through the drive through are crazy at that time. I'm like, really, guys? But whatever. I, what about a Totino's pizza? But you know, I digress. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, most of the t most of the time when I'm um, I'm the guy who has to get everybody's keys to make sure they are not drinking or not drinking and driving. Sometimes they don't want to give me them. Usually, that usually they end up um, learning that it's a case of either give me the keys or I'm or I'm not letting go until you pass out, and then I'm just going to take the keys anyway. <laughs> You're a good man. I like you. Yeah. That's good. Um, Watchdog. And when and besides, and besides, when I think of when I think of places that are the that are the hangover fast food, the only thing that comes to mind is White Castle and. Um, I haven't had White Castle since I was a little kid, mostly because I actually like eating real food. Right. <laughs> like no. They tried <laughs> opening up a uh, a Crystals down here, and uh, for you know, and, and it was and it surged. It did pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but it messed with my guts the first time I did it. Actually, everybody's guts because they steamed the onions with the meat. So mm -hmm. that was, well, you know, it cleared our colon pretty quick, and we lost our appetite. And then they closed it. Yeah, I uh, um got crystals though. I have a I have a fairly strong I have a fairly strong stomach. Um so which which is which is needed for certain varieties of hot dish because well that's the rule is everybody everywhere else in the world it's casserole in Minnesota it's hot dish. Okay. That's 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 the that's the rules of the universe. Um What's hot dish? Mhm. Mm what what's hot dish? Basically, what the rest of the world calls casserole. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, got you. Yeah, those are good. Mm -hmm. But now, when it comes to the whack jobs, oh yeah. Uh -huh. First off, tell the people in the temple the skinny about what the whack jobs is. Man, the, the short story. Mm -hmm. It is a new comic series about a crazy team of contractors taking on all the odd jobs. And uh yeah, that's about it. Mm -hmm. So first off, how how did you get how did you get into in, into um comics? Did you do you consider yourself more of a Marvel guy, more of a DC guy, more of an image guy? <laughs> you know, wow, that's a really great question. Um, lately I've been eclectic, but let's go to the origins. And I guess it mm -hmm. might've started when I was, you know, like in diapers watching a uh, speed racer and I just love animation. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the years, uh, maybe a few X-Men comics through the eighties, you know, I was like 10 you know. and then eventually the nineties, that's, you know, the beginning of the nineties, that's when a lot of comics were popping, you know, breaking mm -hmm. out X-Men cartoons, X-Men titles, Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. All Marvel really, you know, exploded if you remember, and I caught uh, I caught that wave, um, and so I was part of. That. In fact, it's funny that you mentioned this because I was digging around today, and I found some of my original drawings from the early '90s, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to post this up because I'm about to, 
I'm about to pick myself apart. I mean, there is some, whew, it's not bad, but it's not good either. So, but anyways, yeah, uh, it's my influences started from the, you know, through the eighties and nineties mm-hmm. and I'm still actually, believe it or not being influenced, but, uh, yeah, I started off definitely Marvel, uh, DC didn't really do it for me. I, I was aware of what the, the major players were in the stories. Swamp thing was pretty cool. Uh, I think if I could go back and, you know, work more with DC, mm-hmm. like read it and absorb it, and, you know, the whole Swamp thing was good. I, I think that's the only draw I saw. But uh, yeah, more of a Marvel guy from the early uh, Jim Lee's work mm-hmm. in X Men and so on and so forth. And then, uh, of course, Image. After. Yeah. Now, I know he's a. I know he's a controversial figure, and I know everybody's got his opinion on him, but since you're a Marvel guy, what's your take on Jim Shooter? Right. You know what? Uh, I think you did mention that a little. We talked a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. how Jim Shooter uh, had the zeal, right, originally. Mm-hmm. Really wanted to the work happen. He had a passion. I'm not sure when, the, when and if the politics really took over you know the prioritization i i can understand why might make some decisions i don't know if it was you know it, it's really good to probably interview them about that mm-hmm. but as far as what i can tell i bet he started off solid and maybe lost his way but i'm not sure i'd have to um i'd have to confirm with that but uh yeah so he he was marvel right i got my story right yeah he um when it came when it came to when it came to a lot of the a lot of the stuff in the um, late seventies throughout the throughout the early eighties, he was instrumental in term in terms of la- in terms of laying the groundwork. Um, yeah, and the thing is the thing is now he he um, he definitely could get he definitely could get a little obsessive. He especially especially when it came to how de- how um, fixated he was on certain details. And I'd say, I'd say the, um, I'd say the whole political situation really, st- really, um, st- really started to rear, rear its head when, um, when there, when there was the whole, th- there was the whole thing of a Marvel TV series that, um, that, Mar- that, um, he, that he had and, Mar- and Marvel technically didn't. It, it was a, we- it was a weird situation. Um, but I, but I don't think it was, I don't think it was a case of him, of him getting, him getting, um, fired because not having the the right political opinion. It was more of, he tried, he tried to please everybody and, and, and sometimes that ended up backfiring. Um, but one, one of his big claim to fame in his, in his early days was being instrumental in the creation of the Weapon X, um, event. Was that of uh, the Marvel Comics Presents? Was he part of that? Is that what you're talking about? Um, the... No, Weapon X was a um, was a story was a story he was involved in during the during his run with X Men. Yes. Okay, I got that. Um. And and this was du- this was during kind of a golden age for that particular comic, a golden age that cont- had continued for the longest time, even if it got a little insane during the '90s. Um, but I can, I can definitely, I can definitely see that. And I, um, just that given the artwork that I saw, that I saw of the, of the whack jobs when I was there, I'm curious if John Byrne was an influence. Ooh. Hmm. Influence. Nah, my, you know, no, I don't think so. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me that some of my some of the things kind of led mm-hmm. me to the same uh, plateau. Uh, but no, no, not him. Uh, honestly, a lot of uh, artists from the Wolverine series, like uh, I definitely love Silvestri's work. Mm-hmm. Up there, I don't know if you. Can... I got you. Yeah. Office. Yeah. Be... It's littered with comics. Mm-hmm. I did like Silvestri stuff. Um, let's see, definitely Jim Lee, but uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of artists. Honestly, 
um, let's see, uh, Portacio, all the heavy hitters of the early uh, Marvels, uh, Marvel series kind of really influenced a little bit um, because of uh, some of the, I want to say, realism, the proportions, uh, some of the, yeah, yeah, I, I really kind of locked in on the trying to keep things real. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, but then, but then you see the artwork on this, and you're like, well, "Why does this guy look like Marvin the Martian?" Or why is this? You know, what's what are all these other odd things going? On? So, honestly, uh, as far as influences, I'm again like, uh, I'd say I'm still being influenced a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably, if you look through the pages, it's yeah. you're like, "What kind of style is it? Can't this guy just?" you know, pick something and stick with it. I, I kind of threw everything in there. And so a that's actually going to... Mm-hmm. To play devil's advocate on that kind of thing, nobody's really and nobody's really ever influenced by just one thing. It's not like they saw, it's not like they saw one particular artist or one particular um, writer, or in some cases, like in, the, like in the 80s and 90s, artist writers, and just, and just focused on... On, be, on using that as the basis for their style, a lot of people when they when they go over when they go over their influences will bring up a bunch of different people. Um, yes, let me go back to Jack David. Tales mm-hmm. from the. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll go ahead and give credit credit to uh, the psychology mm-hmm. with sort of contrast the content. You know all the tales from the crypts. I I was definitely. So there's the kind of little morbid horror kind of part of me. Yeah. And uh, so thank you for having me in your monastery temple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's funny that you bring up Tales from the Crypt because um, I, I recently, I, rec- I was recently asked by a, fr- by a friend of mine to kind of write a, write a bit about the three eras when it comes to, co- when it comes to comics and and how that and how that can kind of be em, how that could kind of be emulated in role playing games because those two have gone in hand in hand for me since I was a little kid. Oh, um, jeez. Yeah. Like there there was there was the Marvel um, RPG that TSR that TSR did back in the eighties, and then a different one they did in the nineties. Um, in the in um, the late nineties, early two thousands. Um, Marvel tried to do it themselves and inter- with a diceless game, which has kind of been treated as the redheaded stepchild. And Spinner, what do they have? Well, they um they use the the thing is that the, you know how for a lo- for a while Marvel was trying to have this power grid thing to you to uh, universally determine what pe- what um people's power power level was um for for their rosters. I know they did that on their cards, their trading cards. They had those. Things, yeah, but, uh, I don't. I don't know about this universal. Yeah, the power grid concept was was to try and implement that as well, and they did. I do remember seeing power grid stats in certain comics. Um, Interesting. They tried to in, they tried to make that as the base for the uh, Marvel Universe RPG, um, but for whatever reason, they went with a diceless approach that focused more on. Um, po- on these power chits. Basically, you, basically, instead of using dice, you're using a resource with, um, say, re- red and white um, tokens. Or I used poker chips when I tested it. Um, mm. It's not terrible, but the fa- but um, the fact that it do- it doesn't measure up to what TSR had come up with kind of screwed it over. So it sounds like the gym shooter of uh, RPG games. <laughs> um. Jim Shooter was already gone. Was already gone from the company. He was already in the middle of of trying of trying to keep his own company afloat. Because after cause after all, shortly after he left um, Marvel, he ended up forming Valiant. Valiant, you know, mm-hmm. who who's on that title? Valiant was that a, a man? A, oh my. Yeah, we got the uh, 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 what's that guy with the red dot on his chest? I forget. Um, Bloodshot. Bloodshot. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, this must be a movie coming out, but I guess that got. Canceled. 
Bloodshot yeah. the well the Bloodshot movie did come out and apparently there apparently a sequel's in the works which Wait, a, it already got released? Yeah, it got released a few months ago. See Yeah, I, I'm 2020 I guess I guess the theaters are open. I didn't get the <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't get it. Um, okay, so yeah. Mm -hmm. You say it. Uh, yeah, the, Exo Man of War. That's yeah, it. which um, that one, that one I that one I always found fascinating because it's it was basically a a kind of inversion of the whole Iron Man motif. You know, instead of having a billionaire, you have a Roman era barbarian wielding a wielding a suit. Right, and the, and it's like a, a the heck is Venom that you know that kind of living suit, mm -hmm. the symbiote. Yeah. Yeah, that was a wild concept. I think I got the foil cover of uh, number zero, and that was pretty legit. That was a, that was kind of a good artwork. And... So yeah, the Valiant had their mm -hmm. uh, finger in that pie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> although Va Valiant had their Valiant had their own struggles, the lowest of which being when um, um, acclaim acclaim decided to try and gr decided to try and grab a hold of them and. It didn't work out mostly because Acclaim was n not run by smart people. <laughs> Acclaim, the video game people, or what? Yeah. Uh, okay, wow. Yeah, Acclaim, Acclaim Entertainment bought Valiant in 96. Okay. And tried, and, tried to and tried to restart everything under the banner of Acclaim Comics. Um... But unfortunately, it it only lasted like like six years because their uh, video game division was plagued by really really dumb decisions. Oh, so the Jerry Jones. <laughs> yeah, um, the Dallas Cowboys comics. I'd I'd say I'd say it was I'd say it was more of a Cleveland Browns situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> you gotta feel bad for those guys. They have been nothing. They have been do. They have been doing nothing but suffering. Suffering, fuck it. <laughs> but Hopefully. now, when it now, do you now? Um, when it comes to when it comes to the style, when it comes to the style, you're obviously of the whack jobs. You're obviously aiming for a bit for a bit of comedy. Was that some? Was that something that you? Um, ha you had intended, or was it something that you kind of leaned in as you were developing it? Oh no, the title, uh, yeah, comedy is definitely going to be a essential part of this. Mm -hmm. So, I would consider myself, you know, part cynic anyway, and you know, this year has taught us all to kind of have a loose grip on certain things. You know, be flexible, be like water. Mm -hmm. You know, well, definitely. Uh, you know, everybody's got a way to react to a certain thing, and, and a lot of folks get mad about it. Me, I kind of shrug it off and laugh about it. But uh, uh, the good thing about this is it's fiction, and, uh, you know, comedy's been, uh, you know, comedy just lifts the spirit and gets the endorphins going, you know, mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. Come on, this is wacky stuff. This year has been wacky. Uh, wacky things have happened, period. And uh, honestly, I've been working with these guys at my, uh, you know, I've been dealing with some people for like over the decades and we've got like, you know, just jokes. We just jab at each other. It's it's almost very Deadpool-ish. Uh, but yeah, comedy, definitely, definitely. We're going to have a, it's a serious, uh, I call it siliously, where, you know, you got serious moments and you got silly moments. And uh, honestly, is is a, a reflection of internal struggles we all have. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. I mean, we, we, we're laughing and joking about, you know, sports and bad decisions and comics. And, you know, there there is a dark humor about everything. There's also a light, superficial humor about it all as well. And uh, how how do we react? Do we and, and I think a healthier reaction than getting mad about things is laughing. But yeah, yeah. comedy definitely uh yeah i mean come on man uh, yeah let's see what in one of these issues i have a uh a jar of pickles running at a bad guy and it gets gunned mm -hmm. down by a minute 
I was actually laughing when I was inking kids. I was laughing for a week every time I was doodling on it. I started laughing like I've never seen this before. It's yeah. stupid. It's wild. <laughs> like so, I'm having a good time, and uh, hopefully others will. Though, but yeah, definitely uh, there will be some serious moments coming. Mm-hmm. But come on, man, we got like a, a we have an abominable snowman with a minigun on his arm, and yeah, and uh, you know a dude called Mayo Noise, you know. <laughs> so you know, there's a dude named Bullet Sponge, and mm-hmm. guess what his ability is? Yeah. Soaking up bullets. So. You know, it's just wild. So let's have some fun being wild. Would you would you say that you lean a little bit into into um into a bit of Chuck Jones is kind is kind of antics? You know what? Yes, most definitely. And uh, I'll take it further. Uh, uh, Larson, the Far Side, mm-hmm. loved those comics. I mean, those were probably you know that that kind of one punch. Uh, the the one panel zingers mm-hmm. that you know it didn't take great art to get them the thought across and so yeah you definitely read some of my books it doesn't take great art to get the thought across <laughs> and sometimes there's a punchline as well with a punch but uh, yeah Larson as well Chuck Jones uh, yeah. Tex Avery I love Tex Avery cartoons mm-hmm. oh my god I could just veg out on all of them Droopy and the the wolf and all those crazy things. so yeah there, there's zany in here too. So, uh, so it's kind of funny. You mentioned the, what did I, you know, what, what kind of got me at first mm-hmm. was the early uh, Marvel X-Men with proportion, but then mixed up with my childhood with the cartoons and the kids. I think now I put them all together and you get this little casserole here mm-hmm. <laughs> and this little, would you call it a hot pot or what, what, what do you call it? The, what did you hot call dish. it? It's <laughs> hot dish. That's what the whack jobs is. It's a hot dish. It's a casserole. Oh. Serious gonna... and sarcastic. It's got veggies. It's got corn. Definitely corn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's got meat, potatoes. Is that quote going to be in the back of a future issue? A future issue or something? It's a hot dish. It's, <laughs> it's hot something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some people um, might call it something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, when it comes, um, I do remember when I looked at the when I looked at the abominable snowman with a with a minigun on his arm. I'm, all I'm thinking is. That's um, that's still not enough DACA. Because you can never have you can never have enough of that. Just like you can never have enough DACA, DACA, DACA. I get that. <laughs> What's that? Is that World? Of, that's not World of Warcraft. That's a uh, that's Warhammer Forty K. That's right. Yes, yes. DACA, DACA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, in fact, it's funny you say that mm-hmm. because originally he was an ogre, but I decided it would be a little more fun to have him like a, a yeti like a actually also mm-hmm. another name would be ugly yeti yeah. instead of ugly betty mm-hmm. <laughs> but so he's got all kinds of uh but originally he wasn't a, not not so much a goblin or, yeah or whatever yeah daka daka you you're right i didn't i didn't get i haven't heard that feedback yet but i'm glad mm-hmm. i heard it from you first yeah <laughs> now when it comes when when it comes to the, when it comes to the issues with within the book um one thing I one thing I noticed is that you is that you did you did a thing where it's equal parts a comic book and equal parts a coloring book. Um what's the story behind that? Okay, so I'm going to try to keep it short because it mm-hmm. is kind of boring. So in the middle of me, you know, the author and the artist of this project as I was getting the trademark done, mm-hmm something got filed a little oddly on my end i think i ha- i put comic book series instead of like a comic book title so they were you know to in in order to get a deadline um uh, because the filing paperwork and all this other stuff extension trying to avoid extensions mm-hmm. basically because i messed up a little bit on the title the the, the my legal team said hey we're going to need several issues I'm like, what? And I don't have time for that. And so what I did is I had two, I had uh, two thirds of it done and I'm wrapping up the rest of it pretty much as I speak. I've got two thirds of it done at the time. And this is all happening this year. And they're like, okay, so we're going to need, we're going to need more than one issue. I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. And so uh, I'm struggling and finally, uh, it dawned on me, well, 
what counts as an issue. And the legal team said, hey, it could be one page. I'm like, oh, wow, we're cool. So what I did is the normal comic takes 22, about 22. And I had at least two thirds of it. So I'm like, Meh. so I'm like, well, why don't I do this? Why don't I just divide one comic into three parts, kind of enlarge the pages. And then also to cut costs, let's just keep it black and white. This is all, this is my first year. Mm-hmm. This is all it promo demo stuff like let me try to get some traction with my style with the politics with the legality of it let me try to you know handle this and so that's what i ended up doing is doing a two the first two issues are actually six to eight pages kind of big they're not they're not your standard comic size but they are bigger pages are thicker and it is black and white there's no grays so that way the kids can have fun with it and mm-hmm. adults, you know, it could be, it could be labeled adult coloring comic book too, because some of the things going on is adult. There's violence, but there's no potty words, so it is good for kids. Um, I'd say it's even a little cleaner than Star Wars stuff like that. But you mm-hmm. know, y'all be the. Judge. But yeah, that's how I had to do it: is get two short issues out and uh, provide the specimens for my legal team. They got it. Uh, the. U.S. Trade, what, what is that called? The United States Patent and Trademark Office mm-hmm. approved. And that came in a few months ago. I'm good to go. I got it. They got their specimens. It's in action. So I, I'm i the proud, not so proud founder of the whack jobs. Mm-hmm. So the part three is coming. So everybody who purchased the first two issues, free number three will be on its way. I just need a shipping address when it's uh when we're good to go. But yeah, that's the story. I uh it was a, uh, I hope it was short enough because I said I was going to try to keep it short. But you asked. Well, you but, you said, tr- you said try, doesn't doesn't mean doesn't mean that you're doesn't mean that you're going to succeed. <laughs> come on, drop that Yoda quote. Drop that Yoda quote. Let's do, do this. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Although I think I'm a little, I think I'm a little bit too tall to be Yoda. You know, that's kind of funny. You know, there's some people that I ran across, and uh, I'd be like, "Man, you're tall to be a Hobbit," you know, because some people just have a Hobbit look about them. So mm-hmm. I'm like, "You're too tall to be a Hobbit. You're too tall to be a a, a dwarf. <laughs> you, you're tall enough to be a Texan." So <laughs> just so you. Yeah. Um, when it comes now. When it com- when it comes to the notion of being a artist writer, and um, I will admit I have a bit of a I have a bit of a complicated history with th- with that particular title because of what Same. ended up happening during during the '90s, and you you saw it as much as I did. Same. Yep. Some of some of the people that did it um, re- really sh- really shouldn't have been doing that. They should have they should have picked a lane on the matter. Um, yep. Hi, Liefeld. How you doing? McFarland still thinks you're the idiot. Oh yeah, you know it's funny. You know, and I try not to. I I I do hack on myself. I mm-hmm. do make sure I draw feet good mm-hmm. and good ish. So you know, I, I'm I'm yeah. he's he serves his purpose still. But <laughs> when it comes to but when it comes to doing art doing art and and writing, um, is which. Which is the which is the chicken and the chicken and egg situation for you? Do you do you end up writing out the scripting first, or do you um do, or do you do the artwork first? Well, let's see. Hmm, that is a really good question. I wasn't I wasn't prepped for that one. Let's see. Um, okay, so I would think that me getting traction drawing familiar Marvel characters mm-hmm. kind of helped me develop proportion and, you know, train my brain because honestly, if you see any artists who can draw or keep drawing, they'll even push themselves to draw with their other hand. And eventually, and I'm trying to tell this, you know, to my kids and anybody who else is interested in art that you're really training your brain, not your hand. You know, your, your, your meat is just your interpreter. So you know, basically, we're training our brains as artists to observe, make observations, and then, and then, 
put those perceptions on some form of medium. And so I would think it was the art that got me first um, because stories are like better told by master storytellers. You know, uh, I, I go back and watch the ye old Kirk episodes of Star mm -hmm. Trek. And I'm like, some of this writing is pretty good. I'm like, this is back the writing back in the in the 40s to the 60s, even 70s. Some of it was really well developed. I'm like, so it's almost like I'm uh, uh, maybe I'm trying to get traction drawing and proportions and trying to exhibit my thoughts but then it's very important and i'm more I'm, I'm wanting to hone in more on a solid story uh solid character development um and so yeah so as far as uh the i think the meat and potatoes would be the art but i do have like a I do plan on a showing a lot. That's why I threw a bunch of characters in here because a lot of them uh, I can relate to. <laughs> so some of them are going to be life experiences. A lot of them are going to be jokes, like puns and punches and, and all kinds of just zany stuff that I've kind of uh, collected over the decades. Uh, a lot of it being a father, a husband, uh, even a son, I guess, and an mm -hmm. employee, just a Texan. You know, So I'm drawing from a lot of sources. And uh, I think, yes, you're right. Uh, a lot of those heavy hitters that left Marvel and started their own thing, yay, but asterisk, you know, they probably should have got, you know, better writing. In fact, yeah, you know, uh, I got a copy of Wildcats and I'm like, yeah, you know, I jumped in on that. I'm like, and I'm like, this is, uh, I don't know. I mean, the artwork, you know, again, amazing. I'm like, but the story, I'm like, this is just carbon copied, lifted from the X-Men. I'm like, hmm. Maybe. Well, the Wildcats was Jim Lee's work. Yeah, 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 yeah. He left, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he left Marvel and did did that thing. And it, yeah. I just kind of see the the similarities. And it's almost like, you know, you have your Cyclops character, you you have your, you know, the Beast character. You have all these. You know, I just saw too many similarities because it how it happened at the same time. With, I'd, uh, yeah, I'd say um, I'd say the reason why I say the reason why Spawn ended up being the end up being the breakout character for those early image yeah. days was because of the fact that it wasn't similar to past work. Like yes, Savage Dragon, which I believe that was Eric Larson, that yeah. very much felt like an XP of of the Hulk. Um, it's wild because he came. He he was known for drawing Spider Man, right? Um, Eric it's, Larson, it's... He, yeah, he had, he had, I think he had done both. I think he had jumped back and forth between each, um, with now, and, of, um, Youngblood, the whip, the, my personal whipping boy was very much an XP of, um, of the uh, new mutant stuff that Liefeld had been doing beforehand. Um, yeah. Wildcats, of course, was a ver was very much an X Pen um, XP, which is not too much of a surprise because that's what Jim Lee had worked on beforehand. Um, but Spawn, Spawn, up until yeah. that point, previously, um, McFarlane had worked on Spider Man and had worked on the Hulk. Yes, and neither of them really, really can have a comparative fit with what Spawn was doing. Um. The only uh, the only unfortunate part was the, was that whole lawsuit that in, that lawsuit between McFarlane and Gaiman that ended up going on and off on and off for about twenty years. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Fill me in. Help me out. So McFarlane knew that he had something, but he knew that he didn't quite grasp writing just yet. So he brought in other people to help him out. Um, yes, and one of those people was Neil Gaiman who helped really expand the mythos of Spawn and the whole idea of that there are multiple incarnations of Spawn, as well as the creation of Cagliostro and Angela. Um, and, the, and, um, unfortunately, part of the, unfortunately, McFarland pulled a bit, Pulled a bit of a dick move. I mean, after, after all, he he outright admitted that he was a bit of an asshole <laughs> at, at the at the time. And 
he did he would not get he uh, felt that in his mind the creation of Angela was a work for hire job not some not something where Gaiman owned the rights to that character so the two of them would end up suing each other for years upon years until they agreed to a 50-50 split wow and i missed that well they only fi- they only finally set they only finally settled the whole thing like 6 years ago <laughs> that's how long this it would be a case where one one side would sue the other then there would be a bit of a doldrum then it go then we'd go right back to it and this is all over angela and uh some other this wasn't arc. this was mainly over angela um this wasn't over cogliostro wow <laughs> so they got two dudes fighting over a girl mm, i've seen this before <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? It's, that's more. That's more. Or less, that's more or less accurate. Um, McFarlane had grew up with stories of how Jack Kirby got screwed over, and he was determined to not get screwed over. So it, that his is... whole his whole attitude was, "Oh, I'm gonna fuck you before you can fuck me." You're right. That's why they started Image. Well, um, apparently, apparently, the story about why they started Image was. They was artist, um, the artist rights. You know, they wanted. Yeah, there was the whole artist writer thing, but there was also the fact that they didn't like how they felt like they felt like they weren't being allowed to put as much creative input as they wanted to. Um, like they like they were like they had ideas that they wanted to write, but they were but uh, they were being stymied. Um, yep. And uh, eventually, eventually they had they had a meeting with. With um the higher ups at, in the comics division, and they had said we're we're doing image. No ma- it, there's no ifs ands or buts about it. It's just a matter of are we doing image as a, as a separate label within Marvel, or are we doing it as our own thing? But if we're doing it as our own thing, you're not seeing us again. Um, yep. They were offered the le- they were they were offered the Legends brand. Which was a which was a which was a side brand that Marvel had and had used off and on, but that was that was shot dead before before it even got off the ground. Um, I do remember that one of the heads had 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 made the possible worst thing you could say in this sort of situation. "Quote: There's always someone to pick the cotton. <laughs> yeah. You've got you've got five people who are about who are about to bail from your company if you if you don't play ball and you say that." <laughs> Um, but the one who, the one who really cemented that this thing is legitimate was Jim Lee, because he wasn't, he wasn't a maverick like McFarlane or, um, or Liefeld. He was, he was the family man. Like he had, he had a wife and a kid to, to take care of. And the reason why he and en- why he ended up, um, joining up with the whole thing was the aftermath of an of an event that he was going to be going to where Marvel had paid for his ticket but they didn't pay for his wife's hmm. the re- the reasoning that according to some people was that was that well she's not going to be at the event so why why do we have to pay for her ticket wow which <laughs> sounds like a deal deal breaker yeah the and he and then he got on board with the whole image idea, um, and of course, of course, the rest was history. They ended up le- they ended up leaving, and they didn't work. They didn't work for for um. They didn't do any. They didn't do any sort of work for Marvel until until Marvel ended up coming crawling to coming crawling to them with things like here with the Heroes Return project. Or not Heroes Return. Heroes Reborn. They basically tried to outs- they basically outsourced to them and Event Comics. Event Comics would do the Marvel Knights uh, run, which I think worked out pretty well. The only, the only bad thing that came out of that was the first attempt at rebooting Punisher as something a little more supernatural, which only la- only lasted for like four issues before they rebooted it again and did it right. Um, but when, but, um, when it, now when it comes, when it comes to the, 
when it comes to the when it comes to the formatting of like the panels, um, did you some I've seen some comic artists have kind of a grid like attitude about how they form how they format panels, while some are a little more freeform. Where on the spectrum would you say you are? So I also enjoy movie mm -hmm. and uh, play here just recently. Uh, I've been paying attention to camera angles. Uh, like, wait, I just popped in uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, right? Mm -hmm. First opening shots. I'm just watching what the camera is doing. It, it opens up in the sky and pans around to the terrain, and then it, and then in the distance, you can see kids on the horses. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just appreciating a lot of uh, cinematography. Uh, movies are a huge influence on me. And so what I do is uh, I try to materialize what characters are doing what. And then the substance, the story, um, how is it going to lead, you know, uh, how are you going to tell the story? And uh, if you if you do go back to the tales from the crypt, mm -hmm. very gridlock. Uh, not, not, you know, you're just telling a story. Panels can play, you know, usually when you shake up a panel, uh, I'm going to use uh, Tales from the Crypt as an example. Mm -hmm. Blocky, maybe some circles with some shadows. Uh, very iconic, should we say. But it's storytelling, and, it, and I think that the more... Uh, free flow is good, but again, we're we're trying to tell a story. And so, yeah, panels, there is a psychology to it. You mm -hmm. do, uh, make sure that it's also not confusing, you know, that the panels are, uh, the, the bubbles are where they belong. Uh, I, I thought one of the uh, great advice when you're drawing is make sure you have space for the panel. And that's okay. probably like something that should, they, that should be addressed uh, in drawing, one, drawing comics 101. Mm -hmm. Hey, make sure you have space. And the bubbles. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, for the bubbles. And so you will... You will see that I definitely played that out. Uh, I made sure that, you know, the art, that there there was a, a symbiotic relationship, that the things were full, that the, every panel has uh, everything squared. Free flow? Um, man, every time I did that, it never worked for me. So I do, you know, I try to kind of keep the spirit of of trying to, think of it as a movie and you know i've got you know moving parts in my head but i can only capture like a frame and i'm like so what would be the best frame what would be the best angle you'll see uh uh another pet not a pet peeve um one of my particulars is the lighting you know i'm i'm i, I mean you're probably going to find some flaws maybe maybe i leave shadows out on purpose but I always consider the light sources, you know, so I'm making sure that shadows are there. The, the light source is consistent. Uh, like on the first issue, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're team outside and they're like outside of a porch. And I make sure that no matter what angle I'm playing, that the light source is continually coming from that direction. And so, uh, but as far as paneling, uh, again, simple's good. We're trying to tell a story and me being an author and artist, well, I mean, that's me telling me what to do. Uh, in the industry, from what I understand, you know, it's got to be more co-op. You know, mm -hmm. the writer, like what looks like a screenplay, and the artist has to, you know, kind of get a groove for like, hey, what are you, what are we going for? And so there is te more teamwork. So, yeah, I've got this teamwork going for me now, you know, being the author and artist. Hopefully later on, I'm going to run into some people who can write. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. back people who can draw. So I'm just trying to start this up, and then eventually, you know, kind of like, hey, maybe, you know, hey, y'all handle this. I'll kind of oversee and influence a little bit, and let me go start another project. <laughs> but, but, uh, but as far as panel work, yeah, you know, let's just keep it simple. Uh, you know, uh. Yeah, I, I go back to Tales from the Crypt, uh, the, the the Kirby's, the, the Jack Davis, mm -hmm. the Ye <clears throat> That's me, though. Yeah. 
when you know it's interesting and sure. speaking of panel and jim lee got away yeah. with this but if you look at the x-men earlier issues man like on one page it'd be like up to like seven to ten panels and some of them are small i'm like Whoop. but i guess it called for it but i'm like you know i try to avoid that if you do notice on these panels i, mm -hmm. I make sure there's about four to six just like let's keep it big let's kind of keep things moving you know but that's just that's just full creative liberty i'm sorry no i'm not <laughs> um now you've put it you've put out two issues of the whack job so far um yeah, what would you negative yeah hmm? negative two <laughs> negative two right so again you know you've heard of the zero issues yeah and you know, i just went let go let's go way pre prequel we'll go to num we're starting at negative two mm -hmm. and then so it's kind of funny. Like it's it, it is a little confusing for those who don't know what's up, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what would you what would you say are some of the um, takeaways or the learning experiences you've had with them um, with just putting it out there and the response that you've gotten? I picked the. I picked the wackest year to start, right? So <laughs> well, we aside from the obvious, aside from the obvious part of 2020 being the worst year ever. Yes. Uh, so you know, it's funny because I got this ball rolling uh, at the end of 2019, and uh, yeah, I started the artwork, I started the legal stuff mm -hmm. um, in 2019. Come 2020, uh, I mean, really, when things were shutting down, I was like okay no i'm going going all in so you know i've got credit card bills to kind of pay off a little bit here in the future but i got the uh so I, you know again earlier i talked about the legal stuff i got that and then uh i had a, a guy help me out put it together you know i had the art and the words so i he i kind of helped with the uh, uh the, the bubbles the formatting and then i had somebody print it so and then there's that I had the shirts made and i'm like you know what let's just see what happens this year <laughs> you know it's like a roller coaster you're not so sure about you buckle up you're going you're hanging on for dear life and you and you know it's the it's the ride 2020 man and, mm -hmm. and hopefully you know fall off the tracks mm -hmm. the ride's almost hopefully right <laughs> but but uh let's see the response has been pretty good a lot mm -hmm. of it's local. Again, one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is for everybody. And so I respect, you know, this is like one of these odd projects. It, yeah, it's got some artwork and it's got some story. Right? But I also respect that it's not for everybody. Like, mm -hmm. like any grandparents or, or even my parents. Or I know it's not everybody's thing, so I respect uh, but then, you know, it is wild. So I'm like, hey, kids, you could have part of this, too. So uh, as far as reception, yeah, it's all over. My, my kids, honestly, my 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 own kids are kind of like a, a motivator for uh, I kind of just bounce things off of them. They're like, hey, that's mm -hmm. cool. And you know, that keeps me going. But I've been kind of doing the creative thing even before I got married and had kids. So it's kind of they kind of keep me on my toes. Mm hmm. But, uh, yeah, kids can do this. Uh, I also noticed that I... <sighs> let's get into the psychology, if I can open up just a little bit. I, th I thought back in the day when I turned 13, because I was an official teenager, that I had to stop playing with G.I. Joes. And that kind of messed with me. Like, wait a second. Teenagers don't play with toys. <laughs> so I was really distraught. And then when I turned 13, I'm like, I'm still playing with these toys. It's not like a clock went off or an alarm went off or nobody told me to stop that. I'm like, oh, I can continue to play with these G.I. Joes? Okay. You know, and X-Men figures and Legos and all that, other Transformers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And here, 40 something, and I'm, you know, I just bought a Boba Fett action. <laughs> so, and then mounted on the front of my uh, motorcycle, uh, mm -hmm. the windscreen. So I've got like toys and stickers on the front of my motorcycle. I can shoot you a picture of that if you want. But anyways, yeah. that's me. I'm like, why can't I just be, you know, 
childlike, but you know, still pay bills. So mm -hmm. here I, you know, a young at heart. Yeah. I don't know. Um, would it surprise you at all if I say that I was the guy who was getting in getting in fights with the with the class bullies? <laughs> really? Um, like the when it came when it came to the when it came to the whole oh you're at this age you're not supposed to be playing with this out my my whole attitude was I don't care <laughs> like what are you what are you gonna do what are you gonna do about it? take take it away from somebody who's a foot taller than you <laughs> ha 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 nice I did have to stand up yeah. to bullies myself yeah whether it was win or lose and like you know it's on principle and like, excellent um sometimes sometimes there sometimes there were long. There were losses, but um, there were losses that there were losses that much like a tankard a bad ale that didn't go down easy. <laughs> um, but when it when now when it comes to that whole that whole um, negative issue, which um, I w I will admit that I that I didn't even catch because when I look at the cover and I see that dash, I just I'm so used to seeing dashes used almost almost like a semicolon. That it that it didn't even cross my mind, but was the reason for doing that a case of a this being a pre this being a prequel before the prequel? Most definitely, yes. And so uh, again, I start this. This is a wonky year, if I can say that. I think mm -hmm. everybody said that, and uh, so we'll just say it's a whack year from where I stand. And uh, yes, my itinerary is actually kind of full for the next. Uh, we are leading. We're going to have a campaign uh, called, you know, it's funny. Uh, Todd McFarlane just mm -hmm. recently had. It was last year. Where he said, it's the road to 300. He, he mm -hmm. made a record. Yeah, man, mad props. And I, I, I'm, I follow him on uh, Facebook and he's got all these disciplinary, you know, like, hey, you know, page a day, page mm -hmm. a day. You know, he's like a machine. I, I really respect him. Yeah. And entrepreneur. Because mm -hmm. he's, doing, he's doing the toys, too. I mean, I, I want to do that also. Anyways, uh, so he had his campaign of the road to number uh, 300. Yeah. Well, I've got a campaign, the road to number one. So, you know, I'm a nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do this right. And so mm -hmm. I don't have the chops. I don't have the... Uh, the i don't have the resources right now to do a solid number one uh nor kickstarter that's coming the gofundme's kickstarter is coming but it's like you know i i honestly did an assessment and i'm like i don't want this i don't want to really screw up the and uh you know i can i can screw up everything else <laughs> kind of get my traction uh maybe even screw up my first impression but uh but as as long as we get a solid number one kind of building up uh and honestly i can't wait to really drop the real team i mean i get it we got these wild things happening these issues now and i got some uh issues coming up later i got issues we all got issues but the <laughs> issue uh, the whack job issues that are coming up they got some cool players but they're not going to be the meat and potatoes until like number zero or number one and I do. I have been developing. I've had this idea of the whack jobs for over a decade. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until recently I pulled the trigger. I'm like, I'm not getting younger, and things aren't getting done. So let me just do something wild and have my midlife crisis now and invest in some kind of a thing here and, and make it happen. And so I've got a real uh, solid team and a real solid story, and I, I am starting to feel around trying to get other people employed on this, contract some things out. Uh, and, and I'm working towards the number one. That should be happening next year. So, yeah, we'll start with the negatives now, kind of get into it, you know, feel around the politics, the the investments, the the printing companies, the formats, the, uh, it's just, you know, there's some joy somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is also a sense of accomplishment once it's done. Hey, you know, I did a book. How is it? Yeah, eh, yeah whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like, meh. Yay! But pat myself on the back with it. But as an artist and an author, I want to always improve on something. And so, like, oh, hey, that's great. How can we change it? You know. Mm -hmm. And so, lately, I've been picking apart everything I've already dished out. I'm like, eh, yeah, okay. And and honestly, it's just a bunch of action right now. It's all yeah. it's simple story. Uh, the 
the compound is under siege and a kid's getting, you know, attempted to kidnap. Uh, there's an attempted kidnapping on the compound. I mean, mm-hmm. so you don't need to really spell it out. I mean, it's action, but it does play into a future role. And of course, you know, like most Marvel movies here recently over the last decade where you don't need a complete backstory to know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's kind of the attempt that I'm going to make, <laughs> do or do not. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to know all these prequels. It's just kind of like things kind of leading up. But yeah. So yeah, uh, lots of big stuff next year, hopefully. Well, I, I will I will most certainly be look be looking forward to be looking forward to that. And with the with that with that in with that in mind, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to um come to come onto the show and enjoy the insanity that com- that goes down around here. <laughs> I thank you for having me, man. Mm-hmm. It's my pleasure. Mm-hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> yes, let's be palatable. And of course, and of course, a sincere thanks to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>